the Lord to help you, to bless you. I trust that you've had a wonderful day. God's just blessed your life, touched you tremendously, ministered in your heart and your soul. We're looking forward to a good service tonight. God's going to move. God's going to bless. God's going to help each and every one of us that will open up and we'll let him have his way tonight. We're going to Lord in prayer. Just welcome his presence. Ask him to have his way. If you'll stand with us tonight, you help us pray tonight as if you was called upon Heavenly Father. We truly thank you for allowing us to be in your house, to serve you all. Lord, we thank you for your will <laughs> to be done. We thank you for your love and the mercy that you've shown upon us. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day, beautiful life, beautiful breath that you've given us. God, today is your day. Lord, we just want to praise you tonight. Help us to be one by the morning for Settle over us tonight and we'll be your people. Lord, that we'll honor you. We'll praise you. We'll magnify your name. Lord, it's all about you. Not about us, not about what we can do, but God, it's about you and about serving you. Lord, we love you tonight. We honor you. We want to do your work, do your will. Lord, we love you tonight. Just ask you to come into this place, Lord. And help us to be a people with thanksgiving, a people of honor for you. Do the work, God. It's in your hands. We're giving to you. We open up this service tonight, Lord, allowing you just to have your way. Lord, help us not to, not to get ahead of ourselves. Help us not to get ahead of you, but God, have your way in the midst of your people. Touch everyone watching live stream. Touch everyone here in person, Lord. Reach out and bless. Every life and every heart will be your people and will serve you all you. God will give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. For all things are done in your holy name. In Jesus, all the name we pray. The church said, Amen. 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 Turn in your hymnal space. Three fifty four. Three fifty four. Now my sleep is
your soul. Hallelujah. He took our heart on the places of good sunshine where it was cloudy days and cloudy nights. Thank God for his love and his mercy. Thank God for what he's done for each and every one of us. Good to have you in the house of the Lord. Good to have those watching live streams. Good Lord in prayer this time. Take the needs of our church. Let's keep our lost loved ones in prayer. They'll be saved, of course, eternally too late. Keep all our children in prayer. God bless their families, their homes, their schools. Uh, everyone at the school, God will send a million dollars in touch. Minister in a mighty way. Continue to keep up George in prayer. Lord, we'll touch him. Keep John in prayer. Lord, touch him. Also, Ms. Jane, go minister, move in her need. Uh, keep her over raised. Brother Jake in prayer. God will just intervene. Touching that circumstance, touching that need in a mighty way. Also, keep boy Gracie and her mom and dad in prayer. Uh, and uh, Miss Alicia, uh, she had a procedure to the 11th. Prayer in prayer. Also, keep Zelda's mom and dad in prayer. Lord, we'll touch. Uh, continue to keep uh, uh, Brother Bobby's cousin Richard in prayer. Also, keep uh, Kirsten in prayer and her brother. Lord, we'll keep doing the work. Keep blessing. Uh, keep little Matthew in prayer. Lord, we'll touch. Also, uh, Lord Ansley tonight, she has surgery tomorrow. Keep Ansley in prayer. God will touch. God will bless. Also, Ellie. Lord, we'll keep touching her. Keep blessing and minister. Continue to keep Brandon Kaitlin in prayer and her family. Lord, we'll touch. Lord, we'll help them. Also, uh, keep uh, Tim and Angel in prayer. Lord, we'll touch them. Minister their need in their life and do a mighty work. So what if you have a request tonight to give in? Nothing too hard for our God. Amen. He hears it all. He knows it all.
there's proper protection over our whole little neighborhood right here. And it's just that good he can help that he needs also. It's a sad, sad situation. Whenever somebody's got that much foreign arms and he's not getting the help that he needs or you know. And other people may not be getting protection they need.
6, we invite you to be telling people. Next Monday evening at 6, we're going to have movie night. Uh, we finished with our series of Chosen that we have so far. We're going to be watching the other movies. So if you want to come out and fellowship, come on Monday night at 6. Tuesday night, conference call at 7. Wednesday night, service at 7. We invite you to be telling people. Um, September the 22nd, that evening at 5 is men's and women's meeting. Don't forget about that, September 22nd. Uh, also, uh, October the 6th, that Sunday night at 6, Second Chance Ministries will be here singing. Uh, don't forget about that. October 19th is our family fun day from 11 to 2. Don't forget about our uh, code drive, slightly used code drive. Uh, if you have some uh, that you would like to donate uh, for a needy family and, uh, or people that, would, that, that need uh, more codes uh, for this winter, please uh, please bring those in, get those in the basket uh, to be given out by the youth, by the children. Don't forget about that. Also, uh, uh, November 9th is our cook-off, so uh, uh, make sure you get your, uh, your ideas ready, your recipes out, and ready for the uh, chili, the uh, uh, soup, uh, dessert, or casserole cook-off. Looking forward to that. I've already got four judges lined up, so uh, uh, first place uh, prizes will be awarded to the ones that, uh, that are uh, deemed to uh, be the, the, the ones that win the categories. However, we're going to eat it all. We're going to eat with four if we run out. So uh, come on out on November 9th. Ten dollars for adult. Ages five to twelve is five dollars, and uh, under five is free. Don't we'll forget about that. Uh, looking forward to that. Going to have a good time. Also, don't forget to be. Uh, if you need some forms, see me. Uh, don't forget to be going around and getting your items for our silent auction. That's going to be uh, the night after the Christmas program in December. Uh, all those dates will be on the bulletin coming up Sunday, so don't forget about that. Uh, looking forward to the, the silent auction. Looking forward to uh, the fundraiser. We're just having a good time. So, uh, lots of things taking place, lots of things happening. Also, Saturday, November 16th, from 11 from 10 to 12, uh, all the children will be going skating at the skating rink, uh, pizza and skating, uh, pizza and skating party on November 16th. So, don't forget about that. Most important announcement: Jesus is coming soon. Ready or not, He's coming for church, coming for people, coming for those looking for Him. Don't miss any announcements so far. Praise the Lord. All right. We had a willing volunteer come in the door tonight, wanting to take an offer, so we're going to have little Matthew come on up. Who wants to help little Matthew? All right, come on there, Jacob. Sing your hand first. Dear Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for one more time to give back to you, God. Thank you for allowing us to give to you of ourselves, of our time. Lord, we just thank you. You've given us everything. Lord, now it's the time to give back to you. God, we ask you to bless those that have those. Don't. God, reach down. And Lord, help us to always be a cheerful giver. Whatever we have, help us to give back to you, whatever it is. Whether it be money, whether it be time, whether it be talent, whatever it may be, God. Reach down and help us to do your will and do your work for the furtherance of your gospel. We give you all glory and all praise and all honor for all things we've done in your name. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Worship the Lord as Caitlin sends a special. <laughs> This is for my glory, I'm all the voices. 
you have your Bibles, Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Good to see each and every one of you. Good to see all these children, all of you adults. Good to see each and every one of you here tonight. Praise the Lord. Are church 
people that are as negative as I've ever seen in my life. Amen. They're negative about everything. They put down everything. They don't want this, don't want that, don't want to be involved with this, don't be involved with that. But they'll be the first to complain about how something didn't go right. Yes, right. Amen, preacher. Amen. They'll be the first to complain about, well, you didn't do this, preacher. You didn't do this, teacher. You didn't do this person. You didn't do this person. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. They'll be the first to complain, well, it wasn't right, what this, what that. And they won't get themselves involved. And so that's where so many times people miss the mark with God. So many people miss the mark with the Redeemer. is because they're so worried about being negative and putting down everything to open up their heart and say, God, use me and mold me. Because let me tell you, church, not everything in life is negative. Amen. Not everything in life is negative. Let me help you. Let me just help you. Hallelujah. You might, have, you might have barely got here tonight in a vehicle. Whatever kind of vehicle it was. Maybe the motor's about to blow. Maybe the tires are getting bad. Whatever the case. Barely got to here. And so you think that, man, this thing's fixing to blow over. This thing's fixing the tires going to go flat. Or whatever the case. Be thankful that you had something to go with. Be thankful you had something to get to God's house. You see, but we look at so many times, we look at the negative, and we harp on the negative and the bad, and we harp on the how bad it is and how this is, and people just want to complain. You know, I, I've seen people that would rather complain than to eat lunch. Just got to the plan. I've met a few of them. I didn't hang around too long. I, 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 I'm not going to listen to a complaining in the middle because I'm just, I, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older. I don't know if it's because I'm a country boy. I don't know if it's because I'm crazy. But I've lost a lot of my cool uh, in the past several years. And I, I sometimes I speak what's on my mind. And sometimes it's not the politest as people would like it to be. So that's why when I hear a lot of complaining, I just have to mosey on, uh, whether it be at work or wherever it may be. Uh, at work or even around church people in general as a whole that you come in contact with uh, sometimes you just have to do that uh, because you know uh, it's not polite to say shut up but sometimes that's what you want to do right? Right. amen <laughs> preacher I'm just real with you tonight sometimes that's what you want to do but you can't be eating sometimes you might have to because sometimes you just call, got to call a start a start you just got to say, hey, it's time. I've tried my best. And I'm and just, just, just shut up. You know, sometimes we got to do that. But you know what? That's uh, 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 but, but we try not to do those things. I, I'm still on the subject. You just bear with me. I'm still on the subject. I, I might, I might bet a little bit, but hold on. <laughs> but we're talking about negative. These people of Israel, these people of Israel, God had blessed them. God had formed them. God had formed Isaiah. God had done a work in Isaiah's life. God had helped Israel. God had brought them through captivity. God had touched them. And yet, what did they still want to do? Rub their mouth and belly out. They still wanted to complain. They was not happy to be happy. Some people just don't like being happy. Some people just don't like being excited. Some people just want to be mad and gloomy. I'm not one of those people. I'm not going to stay gloomy and mad. Huh. I'm going to be happy. Happy, like Sai says. Happy, happy, happy. That's the mindset we ought to have, ain't it? That's the mindset. The children of Israel should have been happy. No, everything didn't go right. No, everything wasn't going the way they wanted it to at every time. But good grief, God had delivered them. God could have left them in captivity. God could have let them die in captivity. God could have just wiped them out and said, I'm done with y'all. I'm going to create a new Israel. Could have done it. But he didn't. He loved them and cared for them. Here he's talking to the people. God is talking to the people through Isaiah. God is, uh, is, is talking and moving and touching and trying to touch in their lives. He's trying to encourage them. And so I want to talk about some aspects <laughs> or some attributes of the Redeemer tonight. First of all, he is a supplier. And we look at this scripture and we look throughout the word of God and we see how God always supplies the need. It don't matter what you need, God can supply it. He's not out of it. You know, sometimes you might need something to work on, something to fix something, go to the hardware store, and the hardware store is out. Let me tell you, God's never out. That's right. Hallelujah. It ain't out of God never has it on recall. 
And God never has it uh, uh, in a warehouse somewhere away. God's already got it ready and available. And all we got to understand is who the supplier is. And to, to, when we know the supplier, that means we're going to get to the supplier. We've got to get to the Redeemer. He's the only way we're going to have the supply. He's the only way we're going to have what we need in our life, in our everyday walk. God is the only way. The, the world's not going to supply. The world's not going to give. The world's not going to give you what you need. But God's going to supply you. God's going to give you uh, the, the, what you need in your life. You see, uh, when things go wrong, God is the one that's there. Uh, friends and family can't always be there. Loved ones can't always be there. But God is always there, just like with Isaiah. God was always there. He was supplied when they didn't even think they was getting supplies. Right. He was always on the backside. Just like Abraham was taking Isaac up to be offered as a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't even realize God had the rail already going up the other side of the mountain, getting caught in the bush in the thick. Hallelujah. He didn't even realize that God was already working on the backside of the desert, on the backside of the situation. God was already working. You know why? Because he's a supplier of all suppliers. He's got what you need, church. I'm telling you tonight, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be pumped up. If you know the Redeemer, you know he supplies your every need. He supplied me every day, and he supplied you every day. And we need to get back to the nitty gritty and share this with somebody. Why are people not getting it? It's because they're not going to the supplier. When I worked in the police department, uh, they had a, uh, a little little icon, a little, little um, a number, you know, tip line where you call, and it had a little portion looking thing on there that said, take me to your dealer. Talk about drug dealers, you know, they want people to call in for, for drug dealers and all, take me to your dealer, uh, you know, and, and, and it had a little portion. Well, you know what, we need to have a picture of Jesus, hallelujah, say, take me to your supplier. Take me to your supplier. your supplier, Jesus. If it ain't Jesus, you ain't the wrong supplier. You're going to go, you're going to go hungry if you ain't getting supplies from Jesus. You're going to go bad if you ain't getting it from God, Jehovah. You're going to go wrong if you don't get what you need to get from God because it's the holy baloney that comes from anywhere else except for God, Jehovah. He's the one that gives a real McCoy, the one that gives a real, the real deal in your life. <laughs> what this world has to offer will fade away. What this world has to give will, will, will be lost and, and, and gone away. But God gives the real deal. You see, He keeps us. He keeps us from drowning. Hallelujah. In the cares of life. Listen. He said, When I pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you, get, when you go into deep water, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be right there with you. Now, I've told y'all before this, uh, this before, and, and y'all know that. I. I can't swim. I swim like a rock, straight to the bottom. I can't swim. But I'll go in a boat. If I got a life jacket handy, I don't have to wear it, but I'll go in a boat um, <coughs> and uh, go any depth of water you want to go. Don't matter. I like that. I'll go fishing. Don't bother me. But I remember one time, me and my cousin, we, uh, we had, he had a little flat bottom John boat, and we was fishing at Bay Lake. We was out there fishing, having a good time. Mm -hmm. Some of you might have heard this story. Was out there fishing and uh, just having a good time. They have one of these seats that you that has like a little metal bracket that, that clamps onto the bench seat that you sit in. So I was just fishing, you know, having a good old time. And for some odd reason, uh, I guess it was just meant to happen. Uh, I leaned back too far, and the next thing I know, I'm in the water and I'm holding on the side boat, saying, "I can't swim, I can't swim, help me." And my cousin, so I'll never forget, my cousin says, put your feet on the ground. And uh, it, it wasn't about knee deep where we were that fish. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so I was I'm good, you know, and, and, and so that, that's a good memory with me, my cousin. But I tell you that, I tell you that, you know, no matter how depth of water, uh, deep of deep water you get in, no matter how deep in life that you get, my bring it through without a sink, I'm hair on your head. My God will do that for you, church. Hey, supplies. He supplies. He says, neither shall the flame kindle upon the you ain't got to worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just keep marching on for God. Because he's a supplier. See, the world don't have this hope that I'm talking about until they receive Jesus. They've heard of, they might have heard about God. They might have heard about Jesus and what Jesus can do. But until they experience, until they know the real deal, they can't talk about it. But I'm here tonight to tell you I can talk about Amen. what my Jesus can yes. do for me. What my Jesus has done for me. Yes. Amen. I'm here tonight to tell you, hallelujah, that he supplied. When I was in that fiery furnace, he supplied. And he brought me up, hallelujah, to keep on keeping on. When I was going, like the river, when I was going through the river, hallelujah, by God, was bringing me up. 
up. It don't matter what in the world you have to ever go through. Your God will be with you if you'll let him supply your need. But what happens is in church world, in the church world, we want to do it ourselves and we want to leave God out. We want to do it ourselves and leave God on the outside looking in. He's like, you know, kind of like when you when you go by a department store and you look it in the window and say, man, I, I'd like to have one of those one day or something. And you don't go into, into business or you don't go in and hit it. You know, it's kind of window, window shopping. That's the way so many people leave God outside looking in the window. And he's wanting to come in and he's wanting to bless your life, my life, and everybody else's life. But people are too, uh, for lack of a better term, too foolish to let him just come on in and do what he needs to do, what, how he needs to work. We need to get back to the church world that we're supposed to be. The church world is not supposed to be like the world. Right. We're supposed to be different, right. set apart, a different people, look different, act different, talk different, be different. Right. Our vocabulary should be a lot different than the world. Our desires should be a lot different than the world. Amen. Amen. We should desire things that are pleasing to God, that are holy. Hallelujah. You see, He preserves our life. He's, a, he's the preserver. You know, just like I was talking about earlier, any depth of water I'll go, have a life jacket handy. If, if the boat begins to sink, or if uh, something, uh, something hits it and, and causes damage to where it's going to sink, <coughs> or run aground. Those life preservers are there for that exact uh, accomplishment. Yes. You take that life jacket or that or that throw cushion, and that's a life preserver. It's to preserve life. It's to keep you afloat till help gets there, till help gets by, till help comes uh, upon the, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to be able to get you in their boat. And so that's what that preserver, and that's what God does. God is our preserver. When we think we're going under, God is our preserver of life. He's that preserver that supplies that need that helps us not to drown and not to go under. You don't have to let the seaweeds of life take you under for one last time if you don't want to. Amen. Amen. You have a choice. You have a choice. I have a choice. We have a choice every day of our life. Let me just say this. Nobody made me come to church tonight. Yes, I came because I love the Lord. Nobody made me pray this morning. And tonight. I do that because I love the Lord. Nobody makes me read my Bible. I do that because I love the Lord. Nobody makes me talk right. Nobody makes me live right right now. I do that because I love the Lord and I want to be what He'd have me to be. I want to be the person that He wants me to be. I want to be the individual He wants me to be. I want to be the Christian, the saint that He wants me to be. You see, nobody, nobody, nobody makes me do anything for God. I do it because I love the Lord. And that's the mindset we need in our lives. Is everything we do is because we love God. As simple as that. If we love God, we're going to do for God. Right? Amen. If you love someone, you do something good for them, right? If we love God, we're going to do something good for Him, and that is serve Him. The most important or the best thing or the greatest thing we can do for God is to serve Him with our life. Amen. That's how we give back to God. That's how we can give back to God is by giving Him our life. Secondly, secondly, He's the one that sends down the blessings. Sends down the blessings. You see, it, it, ain't, it ain't the politician that sends down the blessings. Amen, preacher. Amen. It ain't the Republican or Democrat or liberal or, or Unitarian or whoever that sends down the blessing. It's God that sends down the blessing. Now, God can use any conduit or any person or people or nation to allow them to be a blessing to a people or to help people or to give to people. But my God is the one that gives down the supply. My God is the one that, hallelujah, sends down the blessings, whether it be healing, whether it be miracles, whether it be signs and wonders, whatever it may be. My God is the one that sends that down. It's not, it's not the, the bosses. It's not the, uh, the politicians. It's not the businesses. It's not friends. It's not family. But it's God that sends down the blessings from on high. Uh, the blessings from on high are for everyone to get a hold of. Hallelujah. You know, he, he, he's the one that brings the saints back together. Isn't that what he's telling Israel here? He's talking about bringing them back together. If you're not I'm with me, I will bring thy seed from the east and Galilee from the west. Let me tell you, my God will bring all of his seed, all of his children back together. Hallelujah. 
Lord sends down the blessing. He allows us, hallelujah, to be with other saints. He says, I'll say to the north, give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. Hallelujah. The blessings, the forming, the making, the giving, the, the allowing to be. It came from an awesome God. It came from a God that loves you and loves me. He lets the blind and the deaf be healed. That's who does it. Oh, yes, he might use God to do it, which is you and I. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But let me tell you, he can heal the blinded eyes. Hallelujah. Make them see. He can heal the deaf. Hallelujah. Just because you know, some people are blind, and that don't mean they're deaf. They can hear the word of God. And just because they're deaf, they can see. They can see the word of God. They can see God moving in their life and, and around their life. Hallelujah. I want you to understand, my God is the one that sends that down, sends the blessings. Hallelujah. Left and right. There's not a day that goes by. There's not a day that's been by that somebody had not been blessed from on high. Amen. We hear about it all the time. Hallelujah. Even in our church services. We hear people testifying what God's done, right? Amen. Has God been good to you today? Amen. Huh. Has he blessed you today? Amen. Amen. It was God that blessed you. It wasn't man. It wasn't, he might have used man or people to help you today or to bless you to be a blessing. But it was God that allowed it to happen. Hallelujah. People need to realize they are blessed. You know, I, I begin to think hear about these tragedies that's been occurring here lately. <clears throat> I begin to think about how people take life so frivolous. People don't even care about life or other people's lives much anymore. It's all about me, myself, and I. That's the way the world is getting, the way the world has been like that for a while, but it's getting worse and worse. They don't even realize there are blessed people. There are blessed people. Don't even realize that. You know, I, I, I can't fathom, you know, people that want to harm other people. You know, if, they're to, if they have so much turmoil and hate, they want to harm someone, harm themselves, not other people, not innocent bystanders. You know, that's just the way I feel. I mean, you agree with me or not? That's just the way I feel. You know, uh, because, you know, no sense in innocent people getting hurt or injured or worse uh, because of people's choices. They don't realize that. That's why, that's why God's people, We've got to get out here and we've got to share with somebody the blesser that is blessing, the blesser that will help them no matter how far low in their life they are, no matter how far down they seem, no matter how hopeless and helpless they feel, God is able to bring them out from where they're at. God is able to bring them out. It don't matter how horrible or how bad they are or how mean. God can bring them out before they do these heinous and horrible things in life. And I, I, but, but we look and we see God as He sends the blessings and He causes blinded eyes to uh, be open and He causes ears to hear. That's physical. But also, He, he also causes blinded eyes spiritually to see. Because you see, it's God that allows us to see spiritually and allows us to see the need for God in our life and God around our life and for our family. And He also opens the spiritual ears so we can hear what God's saying. <clears throat> Sometimes God's speaking and we just we, we, we're too busy talking and don't want to hear what He's got to say. God has something for every one of us, church. He has something for us to do. He has to work in these last days. I don't believe that God intends for His children, His people, to sit idly by in these last days. I just don't believe it. I believe we're to be about the Father's business because when He comes back, He needs to find us faithful. And if we're going to be faithful, we need to be working for Him. Whatever it is that God allows us or instructs us or gives us the ability to do, that's what we need to do. You, you, can't, you can't operate in somebody else's anointing or blessing, but you can operate in the anointing and the blessing that God gives you for your life for such a time as what you're in at that moment and that place. Hallelujah. We can see, when He opens our spiritual eyes, we can see the glory of God coming down. Hallelujah. The glory of God just moving. Sometimes at work, I'll, I'll be in my office for a little bit, and I get to thinking about the Lord, and I just, I just, just feel a solemn presence of God just there with me, and I, be, I thank Him. Sometimes I'll be in my car or my truck, uh, driving down the road, and I get to thinking about the Lord, and I won't have the radio on, and I just think about the Lord, and sometimes I get to thinking about how good He's been, things He's done, 
things that he, he wants me to do or whatever. And I'll just, sometimes I'll just begin to cry because of all the blessings that he's given me in my life and how he's touched me in my life. And so I, 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 and so I, I see the glory of God shining around. And I see the glory of God working and working, hallelujah. When we don't see it working, it's still working, church. I'm telling you, the people can't see it with physical eyes a lot of times, but spiritual eyes, you can see God working in the background. You can see God moving and God ministering and God doing a mighty work. God's doing something uh, around, uh, around if we'll just keep our eyes open and focused on Him. He's doing something and He's using you to help do it because He called you for a purpose called you for a plan, just like he did me. And so we've got to understand, we can see uh, every day the miracles. We can see those signs. We can see the one. We can see God's handiwork. I like to see God's handiwork. In the morning, I believe, I believe it was this morning, I was sitting over at the school in the, uh, right the side of the road, waiting for time for traffic, to direct traffic. And uh, it was overcast this morning. I think it was this morning. Yes. It was overcast. And I was looking to the east, and it was overcast. And then I seen, I, I don't, it looks, it looks smaller than it is, but I seen an opening that was like a line. And coming straight down was like sunbeams, just going straight down. It was overcast the rest of the place, but it was straight down. And I began, I began to think, you know, one day, that's what it's going to look like when Jesus steps out. Is he going to split that eastern sky? And it's just going to be like sunbeams coming down. And people's just going to be going up. And I looked at that, and I thought, my, how beautiful that is. Just an opening in the sky. Everybody looked overcast. Maybe nobody else was paying attention to it. I don't know. But I did. I saw it. And I saw I saw those beams just radi radiating down. And at one particular spot to the east, I thought, man, one day, one day, I'm going to get to see that for myself. And he's going to come back. He's going to take me home. I'm talking about the handwork of God. That was the handwork of God. That, that, he, that he was able to do that and, and able to uh, allow the, 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 the sun to come down and, and break through the clouds. And so I tell you that, I tell you that when, when you seem like you've got clouds hanging over you uh, in a particular moment, just remember God has sunbeams to break through those clouds. He has a sunshine. He is the sunshine. S O N S H I N E. He is the sunshine that breaks through those cloudy moments. And then thirdly, thirdly, he is the only Savior. <coughs> there was a popular <coughs> excuse me, TV person years ago that said there was more than one way. Well, she lied. There's only one way to the Father. And it's through Jesus. If people want to believe the lie, they believe what they want to believe. I can't force them to believe the truth. But I'm telling you tonight, was this September the 4th, 2024, there's only one way to the Father. His name is Jesus. Only one Savior. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. He's the only Savior. There is no other God, no other Savior. There's three triune God here. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. But there's no other God. There was not another God in the beginning, and there's not going to be another after. God has always been God, and He always will be God. Hallelujah. God Jehovah is the one and only, and He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus, so that we would have access to heaven, so we would have access to the Father, so we'd have access to man one day and to have a better life. I'm going to tell you, it's been a great life serving Jesus. There's been rough times, there's been hard times. Every one of us have had those. But it's been so great since serving, serving Jesus. Because he's been there with me even through the hard times. He's been there with you through the hard times. You see, a man on earth tries to take a pedestal. Look at me, look at what I've done, look at what's happened. I'm in control of this, these other kings and these other leaders of these other countries. Look at me, look at me, look at what I've done. They are just pawns. In the scheme of God's plan, God is in control. There's nothing that happens that God is not aware of. There's nothing that will happen that God is not aware of. No matter how things uh, uh, come or things go, God is always aware of what's taking place. 
He's not taken by surprise, church. People can think they're on a pedestal, and people can raise their self up. But one day, one day they're going to come crumbling down because God's the only one going to be on a pedestal. Yes. Hallelujah. My Jesus is going to be in the right hand of the Father yes. in heaven. You see, the devil, he can have a pedestal. He likes to have a pedestal. He likes to put himself up high and mighty. Look at me now. The devil ain't nothing but a rotten, stinking loser. I'm going to say it again. Devil ain't nothing but a rotten, stinking loser. That's what he is. Saints can take a pedestal if they want to, but they're still not God. And they'll never be God. Friends will do all they can to help you and help me, but they can't save us. Family will do all they can to help us most of the time. They can't save us. The preacher, I'm doing that. I can't read my ear the best of my ability. But I can't save you. Amen. You're looking for me to save you. You're looking to the wrong one. I can't save you. But I know a man who can. <laughs> His name is Jesus. Only God can save. Only God. We can only be redeemed by one God. And through trying God. God, Father, God, Son, God, Holy Ghost. It is with His power. It is with his authority that we can be saved and that we can be right. Romans 14 and 11. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every knee, excuse me, every tongue <coughs> shall confess to God. Philippians 2, 9 to 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, giving him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things on earth, things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. One day, every body will bow and confess that he is Lord. Amen. Everybody, from the highest politician, from the highest king or governor or, or president of a nation, of a country, from the highest uh, boss man, from the highest whoever, they're going to bow and they're going to confess that he is Lord. If they didn't do it on this side, they'll do it on the other side when they're being cast out into everlasting darkness for eternity. They'll do it because every knee will bow, every knee will bow, every tongue confess that he's Lord. And they didn't do it on this side. It's too late. There's not, there's not any getting together with fellow saints and praying for somebody else to make it into a different level of heaven or to even get to heaven. Once a person's last breath has been taken on this side, it's over. Whatever they did or did not do is in judgment between them and God. Man, friends, loved ones, neighbors cannot help. It's over. Every day. And all these ones, all these ones out here. The Lord says, Venus is mine. <clears throat> That's why these people, when they get ran to rave and curse and act crazy, I, I really, a lot of times, I try not to get too upset about it. Because I know one day they're going to have to bow to him and confess him as Lord. They, if they cuss all the time over here on this side, they're going to reap the rewards of what they do. Because the Bible says, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Whatever he sows, whatever man sows, whatever man does, they're going to reap what they're sowing. You see, today is the day of salvation. People need to understand that. People need to know that. We know that because we're all family, we're all home folk here tonight. I came to encourage you. Encourage you. If you know the supplier, if you know, if you know the redeemer that supplies, that blesses, that is the only Savior, share that with other people. Share that with somebody. Let somebody know. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you what my Jesus did. Hallelujah. My Jesus can walk on water. Hallelujah. My Jesus can turn water into wine. My Jesus can heal blinded eyes. My Jesus can raise from the dead. My Jesus can save a whole country boy or a country girl. My Jesus, hallelujah, can help me to make it day in and day out and love him and honor him and praise him. My Jesus, hallelujah, can bring me through thick and thin. My Jesus can supply my every day. My Jesus can come through in the end when I think there's no hope and I think there's no help and I think I'm going to go under. My Jesus will show up right in the nick of time. That's my Jesus. That's your Jesus. Isn't it? Hallelujah. 
Oh, I'm close. Look, are you excited? Amen. Amen. My Jesus. Tell people. Let them know. Don't be bashful. Don't be scared. You don't have to be as rambunctious as me. I know I get crazy sometimes. I know. You ain't got to tell me. I already know. But just share with somebody. Let somebody know. I know you might get tired of hearing But tell them anyhow. Invite them over for them. <laughs> if I'm over for a bacon and cheese biscuit, say, hey, let me tell you about my Jesus. They won't be rude and just take your biscuit and run. They'll eat it. They might eat it fast and about choke on it and then take off. <laughs> but at least you'll have about two minutes where you can tell them about your Jesus. Right. Or if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty, fix a good old pot of uh, sausage gravy and homemade cat head biscuits and, uh, and get some good old bread and some bacon. You know what? They might be about three or four, but they're just having a little, little service right there. They, they, uh, they might not hang around too long, but they, they won't be rude. They'll eat what you got there, and they'll, they'll be hearing stuff while they're smacking that, that food. Boy. Amen. Yeah, come on now. I, we, I told you I'm so country boy, but I can tell you tonight that no matter how you got to tell them, no matter how I got to tell them, we need to close on every one of our church vehicles. And every Sunday when we leave church, we need to just be sharing with people about Jesus. You know how people used to get on CBs and talk CB talk? We need to get on those little outside speakers and talk Jesus talk. And say, you know what? Let me tell you what Jesus did today. Hey, everybody out there. In the, and, and stop. Hey, everybody out here on the lake today and not in church. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, don't worry about not catching a fish because I'm talking real loud. We're going to help you out right here. See? I mean, that's a pretty good idea. Pretty good idea. Y'all will really fall out of my gift one, won't you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> but, and I know that's not. But you know what? That's, we, we need to be sharing Jesus. People need to hear about Jesus. This simple, hateful, Actions of the devil that's going on around our communities and towns needs to stop. People need to hear about the love of Jesus. Need to hear about Jesus can help no matter what they're into. Jesus can help them through. Jesus can help them. Jesus will forgive them and save them. Tell them about Jesus. How did you stay with them tonight? We know our redeemer. So we know he supplies, we know he blesses, and we know he is all the one to save. So when we when we get in the highways and the hedges, when we're out here on the job or wherever you're at, let somebody know what Jesus means to you, how he's blessed you, how he's helped you. As we pray, as Father, pray to God to help you to always be that one to uh, share Jesus with other people. But also, don't forget tonight, and also uh, during your prayer time tomorrow, while you pray, pray for uh, Anthony and everybody go well with her ear surgery. Uh, please keep keep her in prayer for tomorrow. Look, Looking for good results from, uh, from, from that. Uh, God will just intervene. So, uh, and then all these requests that you've heard tonight, keep those in prayer. Keep, don't, don't just pray with the church. Pray with the home. You might not remember every one of them. Just, just, just say, Lord, the uh, ones I don't remember, God, you heard them tonight in church and you saw the need. Just, just yeah, talk to the Lord uh, when, when you have time, when you're praying. And if you ain't got nobody else or nothing else to pray about, pray for your preacher. I need all the prayer I can get. And uh, you need all the practice you can get. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we come before you throne of grace tonight. We love you, we honor you. Lord, I thank you for each and every one here. Lord, I thank you for everyone on our sound this Lord, watching live stream or here. Lord, we thank you for everyone. Lord, we're all home folk. Lord, we all love you. We've all served you and doing your will, doing your word. Lord, we love you and praise you for all things. God, we come to you tonight. Just thank you for everything you've done in our life. Lord, we, Lord, we know that you are our redeemer. Lord, you're the one that supplies all our needs. You're the one that blesses from heaven. And Lord, you're the one that is the only Savior that we can have, ever have or ever get. God, you are the one and only. Hallelujah. We love you. Tonight we praise you. Lord, help us to be that one that shares with other people what you are, what you mean to us, how you how you came into our life and you changed us, you molded us and made us, and you've done a mighty word. Lord, we love you tonight, God. Lord, we ask you to bless those that are here tonight for whatever reason. Touch those that are sick and afflicted. Bless all our church services. Bless those uh, visitors we've been having. God, just reach out and touch our services. Bless every life. Lord, send the multitudes in from north, south, east, and west. Lord, help us to love people. Help us to share with people your love and your mercy. God, just do a mighty work. Help us to let people know what you what you mean to us and what you've done in our lives. We love you tonight. 
<coughs> we praise you, Lord. We ask you to touch all these ones that are sick and afflicted, all these things you heard tonight, God. Keep your hand upon hands, little Lord. She has her surgery. God, we ask you to bless every life and every heart that we owe people. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. The church said, Amen. 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 Remember, Jesus loves you. Pastor David loves you. God bless you. Shake hands and be prayed.